Everywhere you look in this city, there's a new apartment complex going up, and all of them are targeting college students. This is a city with a large amount of students, but I'm not sure this many apartments can be filled, said Tyler Alexander, a University of Alabama student. There is, in fact, a large student population in the city, with it being home to the University of Alabama, Stillman College, and Shelton State Community College. The university alone boasts an enrollment of 34,852 students, according to the enrollment data the university released earlier this fall. Alexander is right. There are many apartment complex being constructed throughout the city, and if Tuscaloosa continues to build more of these, it may become a city full of empty apartments. The April 27, 2011 tornado is undoubtedly a leading reason for so many Tuscaloosa apartments being built in the last few years. The E4 tornado ripped through Tuscaloosa, leaving severe destruction in its wake. According to Chris Powell, a reporter with Alabama Media Group, 1,257 residential structures were destroyed that day. Many of the houses and apartment complexes which were destroyed in the tornado were homes to students of the University, Stillman, and Shelton. However, it seems overcompensation has occurred in the rebuilding area since the tornado. Another leading reason for the construction of so many apartments in the city is the massive increase in enrollment and that the university has enjoyed over the past decade. Enrollment has nearly doubled over the last 10 years, going from an undergraduate enrollment of 15,892 in 2003 to an undergraduate enrollment of 29,443 in 2013, according to data released by UA. Even so, by the time these apartments are completed, the university may no longer be sustaining the rate of growth that it has in the past decade. Continued growth is expected at UA, but at a slower pace than in recent years, said university spokesman Chris Bryant in an interview with Stephen Deathrage of AL.com. With so many apartment complexes competing with one another for tenants, and with the market becoming even more saturated each semester, each complex is doing everything imaginable to get students to sign with them. Many advertise themselves as being specifically tailored to a college lifestyle, offering amenities such as common study areas and computer labs, fully equipped fitness centers, and large pool areas. Some have even offered incentives such as free televisions and free iPads to get students to rent their apartments. Each complex geared toward college students is also prone to the noise and partying that is often associated with a college lifestyle. For many students, this is what makes what turns them away from the student-focused complexes. When I lived at Campus Way, I had difficulty focusing on my schoolwork and getting good sleep at night because my neighbors would party most every night, said J.D. Hudson, a university student who has since moved to High River Apartments, which has a more age-diverse demographic. Many students prefer to live in quieter complexes that house families, retirees, and young professionals in addition to students. Thus, many will not want to rent from the apartments focused on collegiate lifestyle. Regardless of any incentives offered by apartment complexes, apartments in the city will be empty if there aren't enough students here to fill them. The bottom line is that vacant apartments don't make money for those who invested in their construction or for the property management companies who run them. Tuscaloosa Mayor Walt Maddox assembled a student rental housing task force in June to address this issue. The Tuscaloosa City Council has recently accepted their recommendation to stop the planning and development of any new apartment complexes with 200 or more beds, according to Jason Morton of the Tuscaloosa News. The Student Rental Housing Task Force will continue to assess the condition of the student housing market in the city and implement any other necessary measures accordingly. This has been Andrew L. Grogan for the Shelton State Courier.